Excellent. Excellent, so you've now installed Android Studio and you're hopefully presented with the welcome screen here. As you can see, there are lots of options here, most of which are reasonably self-explanatory, but we're gonna dive straight in and start a new Android Studio project. This takes us to the first of a few option screens. So let's start by filling in the application name. And for now, we'll just call it example app. The next option is to select your company domain. Now at this point in your Android development career, you probably don't have your own domain name, but don't worry, you can really put anything you like here for now. Though when you start publishing apps, you will need to have a unique domain. So if you like, you can leave that as the example that you're given, or you can change it to really whatever you like. I'm gonna change it to rob at myappcompany.com just to show you that you can use literally anything you like here. Then you can choose where the project is saved on your hard drive. I'm just gonna use the default location. If you want to, you can edit the package name that's just created from your company domain and the name of your app. But generally, I would leave that as the default as it might cause confusion later if you do change it. Then down here, you can choose to include C++ or Kotlin support. We'll be looking at Kotlin later on in the course, but we're not using it yet, so you can leave both of those blank. All right, click Next. And you can now choose the form factors and minimum SDK. So form factors, reasonably straightforward. If you're developing an app which is going to be used on phone and tablets, which you probably are, then select the first option. And the options down here, we've got Android Wear, Android TV, Android Auto, and Android Things. So if you're developing for those platforms, you would select those. A slightly trickier question is which API version to use. Now, if you look at the drop-down menu, you can see that the various API versions correspond to the different versions of Android that are out there. So the later version you choose, the more recent functions and features will be available to you, but the fewer devices your app will run on because a lot of devices are still running on, say, Lollipop. So if we select Android 6, Marshmallow, you can see that we can use any APIs from 23 and later, but your app will only run on about 40% of devices. So that's a choice that you'll need to make, but most of the time, and at least in the early stages of your app development career, you probably won't bump into too many features that you need but don't have. So let's stick with API 15 for now. Click Next, and we're given the option to add a default activity. Now an activity on Android is essentially a screen. So as you build a variety of different apps, you'll be adding different types of activities to your apps. You can see we've got some examples there. So you might start your app with a basic activity, and then when the user wants to do something on a map, you'll jump to a Google Maps activity. You can see there's a full screen activity, various other types of activity that we'll see later on as we go through the course. For now though, we'll just choose an empty activity, so a very simple one to get us started. And click Next. And this is our final option screen where we're allowed to name our activity. The default for your initial activity is main activity. So we're gonna leave that as it is. And the layout, you can see the name for that is just the name but reversed. So activity underscore main. Those are the defaults. So we'll leave them as they are and click next. You might find that there's some new components that have been installed to allow you to create your app for that particular version of Android. So if you do, then click Finish. And finally, Android Studio itself should boot up and create your example app project. And here we go, your first glimpse of Android Studio. Now for me, Android Studio has opened two default files here, but you might not be able to see those. It doesn't always open up the same default files when you create a new project. So I'm just gonna close everything down, clicking the X's there and there and I'm gonna click project just to get us back to a completely empty screen. I'd recommend doing the same. So we're all at the same starting point. So you can see we've got lots of different options here, but part of the skill of learning to code is working out what's important and what's not, particularly at the early stages of your journey. So at the top here, we've got the file structure of our app leading to that main activity file that I showed you a moment ago. And then over here on the right, We've got a number of different options. The most important and the most exciting is this play button here, which we'll be using in a minute to actually run our app. Feel free to 
hover over these other buttons if you like to get a bit more information about what they are. But don't worry too much at this point, want to keep it simple. And then round the edge, we've got some buttons, all of which we'll be using at some point in the course. But for the moment, we're going to focus on the project button, which allows us to view our project. Now we've got two key folders here. We've got app and Gradle scripts. Gradle is an open source app building tool that Android Studio uses to build your app. Later on in the course, we're going to be customizing these Gradle build scripts to customize and add features to our apps. But for the moment, we can just leave those as they are. So let's have a look inside the app folder. So we've got three folders here. The first is manifests, which has a single file in it called Android manifest. Let's have a quick look at that one. This is what's known as an XML file and it contains information about your app. So you can see we've got the app name there. We've got details about the icons, the package name, and various other bits and pieces. We'll be editing this later on, just like with the Gradle scripts to add features. But for now, we can pop that back in its folder and leave it as is. Of more interest at this point is the Java folder, which is where the code for our app resides. There's three folders within that. These are test folders, which we won't be using again right now. The one we're really interested in is that top folder, which has a single file in it, the main activity file. And as I mentioned earlier, this is some Java code which creates and sets up the main activity in our app. We'll be looking at that in much more detail in the next couple of videos. And finally, we have res, short for resources folder, which is where we keep things like images and music but most importantly to us right now is the layout subfolder within that where we can see this activity main.xml file. And if you double click that, you can actually see a visual representation of your app. And this is where you get started editing the actual content of the app and the layout. So we're going to spend a lot of time in activity main.xml working with layout and in main activity working with some Java to actually make your app do things. So feel free to take a moment to play around here and maybe add some buttons to your app and see what effect it has. Have a look at the different widgets that are available, different type of text views. There's a lot that you can add to your app from there. You might also want to see how your app would look on different devices. So we've got a Nexus 4 by default there, but we can try the Pixel phone. We can look at some bigger resolution devices like the Nexus 9. And we can even look at watches or TV screens. We'll leave it on Nexus 4 for now, but feel free again to play around with that. And also you can see what your app would look like in landscape mode and switch back and forth as well. So there's a huge amount you can do here, most of which we're going to look at at various points during the course. But for now, let's just try and run our example app on a phone within the emulator in Android Studio. So we click the green play button there. And here we get the screen that allows us to select the device that we want the app to run on. I don't have any phones or devices connected, so I'll need to use a virtual device. And because I've only just installed Android Studio, I'll need to create a new one. So let's do that. Create new virtual device. And so this is very exciting. You can choose any phone you like and you'll have an emulator for it and you can use it right there within your computer. And you can create a TV emulator, an Android Wear emulator and a tablet emulator as well. So I'm going to use the default options as much as possible. So we'll stick with Nexus 5X, but really you can choose whichever one you like here. So click next. And now we get an option to select a system image. So what version of Android do we want our chill device to run? I'm going to go for Oreo, the latest version at the recording of this video, but at this point, you're welcome to try out other versions of Android if you prefer. You'll likely have to download the version unless it's already installed. So click accept to accept the terms and conditions. And again, this will take a few moments to install. And there we go. So that's installed. Click finish. And then you should be able to select the version that you've downloaded. Next. It's just a summary of the options that you've selected, a few advanced settings that we'll be using later on in the course. But for now, 
we'll leave those all as the default and click finish. That will then set up our Android virtual device and we can select it and click OK. And there it is. So it'll pop up on our screen. We can control it using the icons there. We do have to then wait for our app to build using Gradle and we'll also have to wait for the emulator to start up. Here we go. So our app is built with zero errors and our phone is just booting up there. And here we go. So our app is up and running. You can see we've got a message here. System UI isn't responding. That's just because the startup process is still going on. But clicking wait usually just makes the message go away. So congratulations, you've built and run your first Android app. Obviously, it doesn't do a great deal yet, but that'll change as we learn how to customize and code our apps in the next few videos.